The first reading is from Job, the 30th chapter, verses 1 through 11. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? Or what were its base, where were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed bounds for it and set bars and doors and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. The word of the Lord. Let us read responsively Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of the foe gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some went down to the sea in ships, plying their trade in deep water. They beheld the works of the Lord, God's wonderful works in the deep. Then God spoke, and a stormy wind arose, which tossed high the waves of the sea. And they mounted up to the heavens and descended to the depths, their souls melted away in peril. They staggered and reeled like drunkards, and all their skill was of no avail. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from their distress. You stilled the storm to a whisper and silenced the waves of the sea. Then were they glad when it grew calm, when you guided them to the harbor they desired. Let them give thanks to the Lord for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them exalt you in the assembly of the people, in the council of the elders. In them, let them sing hallelujah. reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 1 to 13. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See now that the see and now is the acceptable time. See now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found in our ministry. But as servants of God, <clears throat> we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, <clears throat> in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, <clears throat> by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, <clears throat> truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of, of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in all repute, in ill repute, in good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, <clears throat> as unknown and yet are, are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and not yet killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak to children, Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord.
was written in the fourth chapter of Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, Let us go across to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, and leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him, and a great storm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him. And they said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. I'm speaking with a pastor friend who's been in the same parish for 30 years and he was approached sometime in this 30th year by a parishioner who said preacher I've been listening to you for year after year and it seems like you're repeating yourself and the same old message is coming across and the preacher looked at him and said, how long have you been listening to me? All 30 years I've been here. And you just now, after 29 and three quarters year, have figured out it's the same message? It took you that long to really hear that it's the same message every week, every day? We hear the story of Jesus calming the storm, bringing peace to those who are afraid and at their wit's end in the boat. We hear it. We've heard it before. But have we ever truly listened to his voice calming the storm? When a storm happens, people scatter. The spaces in between you is not caused because of peace and calm. A scattering has taken place. The message is, we will endure. Worshiping Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the midst of the storm. We will praise Him and bring our very best. Listen to the fourth chapter of Mark as our very lives depend upon it. Hear the story in your soul because it is we who are perishing. And Jesus, he's the only one who can help us. You heard also about Job 
in our first reading. We know Job. It's unfortunate, isn't it? Devastating. Tragic. He did nothing wrong. God is talking with the devil and decides, well, yeah, you can attack Job, but just so far. So the devil attacks Job, and that's pretty far enough for me. He loses everything, everyone. He even loses his wife to mental illness. Devastating. These are the kinds of storms we continue to experience today. You know what it tastes like to lose. You know what that's about. To be disappointed or hurt or troubled or broken. You know what that's about. It's real. But the voice of Jesus Christ in the presence of our Lord is real. Er. The Father is real. And so we hear in this 38th chapter of Job, that little snippet on the back of your bulletin, a father speaking to us. A father speaking to reassure us, to humble us. He's speaking out of his majesty, his almighty presence. And we're humbled to be in the father's presence and reassured that God the Father, he's got this. This is his creation. And we're not trying to put down the storms or minimize the suffering. But the Father is speaking and he is present and he's renewing gifts from the Father's hand. There's a fellow named Gottfried Leibniz, born in the mid-1600s, died in the early 1700s. Leibniz believed when everything is fully realized, this is the best of all possible worlds. Hmm. He's often criticized for being, you know, kind of out of touch with the real world. How can you possibly believe that this is the best of all possible worlds? Can't you consider a world in which innocent children and babies don't have to suffer and be abused, forgotten and neglected, born addicted, can't you possibly think of a world that's better than this? He says, not when you fully realize it. Fully realizing. In the midst of the storm, Jesus asked the disciples to fully realize who he is. Not just another guy in the boat. He's God in the flesh. Fully realize Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are here and with us in the midst of the ordeals. Paul approaches the Corinthians in that second reading. He says, now is the time. Now is the very time to open our hearts in a way that maybe we haven't done in quite a while. Just open them vulnerable to the presence of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the midst of the storms. And say, thank you, Father, for giving us this day. It's from your hand, and it's given to us, and we thank you. May our hearts be stirred in a fresh and new way that echoes the faith of a tradition that is great. 
In Jesus' name, amen.